Hey, what up everybody? Lawler here again with another Rocket League news video. We're going to be covering a bunch of new roster changes as things are starting to get announced due to the fact that the rosters are being locked here momentarily for RLCSX. Also going to be talking a little bit about some interviews that have been going on in the scene as well as kind of trying to do a brief recap for the Rocket League ESPN Esports Invitational that's going on. And as always, if you guys would like to support me further, easiest way to do so is down in the description is a link to all my social medias that are on the rotation right here. Uh, make sure you guys go give those a like and a follow, as well as if you guys enjoy the content, make sure you guys give it a thumbs up, as well as make sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of the Rocket League news that I put out daily. Also, before I get into all the roster talks and all the things are breaking down, just so you guys are aware, in a future video, I'm going to dedicate literally just to the rosters. I'm going to take the time to explain all the teams that came from the RLCS, each team, where they're at now, the roster changes that they went through, and I'm going to go through all the RLCS rosters and the RLRS rosters that I consider notable. So we'll probably be going through like 10, 15 teams for each region to be like, okay, Energy did this. It used to be this team. Now it's this team. Now they have this player. He comes from here. SSG used to be this team now it's this player and kind of roll through them just so it's kind of like a one-stop shop for everything that's happened in the offseason that video is going to be very heavy and jam-packed full of information because as we've talked about only three teams in the entire RLCS rosters out of all 20 only three have stayed the exact same Vitality G2 and Alpine so it's gonna be a lot to cover we'll be covering that in a future video after everything is solidified and, and kind of figured out a lot of people have been asking what's going on with flakes previously at barcelona and he took an extended leave because he wanted to find other players that were more similar to his play style and recently a player by the name of growly has announced that he will be teaming up with flakes lottie and nauman for rlcsx and hopefully can learn a lot from the lads and see what they're going to do there were some more questions about who the sub was going to be and currently it's between nauman as well as Growly, based upon who will see uh, better results, per se, with the roster. But it's going to be more of an alternation of the two between Growly and Nauman to see who does the best. You guys may know Lottie as a pretty talented 1v1 player, as well as a KBM player that has been upcoming for quite a while. So interesting to see how it plays out. Maybe Flakes can finally find some people that are similar to his ideology of a more methodical, slowed down, more defensive play style. And I wish them the best of luck. Next up in roster announcements is going to be Barcelona. The FC Barcelona club has announced their new and final third. One that they've been testing out for quite a while and is to no surprise going to be Itachi. Uh, talking about how they're happy to see what they're capable of moving forward. Back over to North America. It looks like 72 PC has officially announced their roster. And we already knew it was Jacob and Wonder after Wonder was let go from the rogue roster. But they're going to be bringing in Tynot Tyler with Kai as their sub. Again, 72PC is still not a team that has been signed, even though they have graphics and a support staff that makes them look professional and are still looking for representation. So if anybody has some shouts or knows somebody that watches this video, because I know some orgs do pay attention, pick up the boys. They're pretty good. Speaking of teams that we're looking to get picked up, Alpine Esports, who picked up the former team of Affinity with Jordan, Magic Bear, and Percy, have officially found a coach. I've been talking about this for quite a few weeks Talking about how they desperately need someone to help them because they keep losing matches in reverse sweep scenarios where they're up convincingly and then they just throw the game away. And a coach be able to help with that. So uh, they are going with Mystic, longtime coach, longtime friend. Uh, super happy that they found someone with some experience that is going to be level headed and hopefully allow them to be more successful. Again, super happy for Mystic as he's able to find a role after being dropped by Veloce. And I will say with the caveat that if mystic turns this team into a defensive boring team like veloce i'm gonna oh, i'm gonna be so mad jokes aside i do hope mystic finds success with the team uh they are going to be in my backyard for where they're based so maybe i'll end up seeing mystic a little bit more than i thought also while scrolling through a lot of the rosters on battle 5 for rlcsx where signups are required and the roster locks are to happen kind of a list that i'm just going to roll through obviously pittsburgh knights we talked about yesterday they're now signed up as the peeps with illusion as their third gyro and aj as for sonics it does look like they are going with j russ with Roldiz as their coach so Roldiz, who originally was retiring is now going to be moving into the coach situation don't think that's going to have any help or benefit but again this is kind of what happens in rocket league and esports in general is where when you have a very i guess early scene they feel like just keeping their friends around is going to be helpful to being successful and yes they do have experience as a player and know how the competitive side works they do not have the ability to actually help make this team better and i do say that hoping that rolled proves me wrong but again 
Uh, I don't think the Sonics team is going to be too successful. I still think there's a lot of issues going on, and I don't think that J. Ross and Roldiz are the answers. That's just my personal take on it. Talked about this one yesterday about how Torment, Gimmick, and AXP are going to be playing together. We're also seeing them play in the ESP Invitational, which we'll talk about next. Uh, but they are signed up under the name Version 1, which is actually the same umbrella of ownership as the Minnesota Rocker team, which is pointing more fingers towards the fact they are getting picked up by Minnesota Rockers. So not sure when the contracts and the terms are going to be finalized for that one, uh, but best of luck to the guys with Wise Ventures, the people that own the Minnesota Vikings, and providing good backing for a team that has been showing some interesting results as we're going to talk about next. Obviously, a lot of people talked about how Singularity was getting bought out, but there was still chances of them still having a roster. In this case, uh, it shows that they are signed up under Team Singularity 2.0 with a roster of Godsmilla, who was originally benched, Breezy, Hibs, and Stealth. So even though Godsmilla was benched, it looks like he's still retaining with the Singularity name, and they're going to be moving forward with Breezy and Hibs. It'll be interesting to see on how this team develops, uh, as they do have quite a bit of talent on the roster. Going away from the roster talks, moving over to an article by Octane GG. They actually took the time to sit down with Chicago and the headline of it being, we all knew we wouldn't continue our form. So it basically breaks down and kind of talks about the overall results of how they went on a really good streak for a few months, not dropping literally any tournament over the course of like three, four months and, and the results that they had. But he kind of provides the insight of knowing that it's very difficult, especially in a game like Rocket League, to create that long-term consistency. So... Um, kind of a fun deep dive talking to Chicago. He's definitely becoming more and more comfortable in his role. And it's a big reason why they are successful. And a lot of it has to do with this comm. So glad to see him getting that confidence as he gets older. And hopefully we continue to see these things, not just in a written Q&A, but also on camera as we pick the brains of these guys, which I hope to see continue happen so they can develop their personalities. Uh, overall article and everything else that I've kind of mentioned today will be down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check those out and read the article for yourself. And last but not least, this one's a little bit harder to kind of break down because it's actually going on. I'm watching it on my second monitor right now. Uh, the ESPN Esports Invitational is going down right now. They've got Group A playing with Rogue, Energy, Rad Enterprises, and Plot Twist. I don't really want to recap too much because the matches are still happening. We don't know who's going to be making it through. But as of right now, Rogue is up 2-0. Energy is 1-1, one and one, Rat Enterprises is 1-1, one and, one, and Plot Twist is 0-2. Oh uh, Energy actually ended up getting upset by Rogue in the very beginning, ended up getting swept actually, but right now on my other monitor, Energy and Plot Twist are playing. Energy is up 2-0 in the series over Plot Twist, but Plot Twist is in Game 3, up 3-1 with 24 seconds left. So it'll probably go 2-1, and then I assume Energy will win 3-1 over that. So there's still another match to go after that, which is Rogue versus Rat Enterprises. How that'll go, nobody knows. Um, but some pretty exciting matches overall. I will link the Liquipedia down below so you guys can kind of just tune in and check that out. Again, those matches start every single day, 1.30 p.m. Central, my time. We will do a pre-show, kind of lead into the groups. And then after that, myself and Shogun will cast the first three matches. And then Sleegy and Leaf will cast the last three matches. That'll be a little bit different on the final day. Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty easy to follow along. Liquipedia link will be down in the description so you can follow along with the schedule as it kind of plays out. Super easy way to stay up to date. And top comment, or I guess two comments that kind of work together. The first one comes from Crimson99 where he asks, Lolo, what signings do you think have been the most shocking this year? And then there was another one that asked about how can I make all these predictions so accurately? It's kind of two parts to it to just to provide a little bit of insight of what really goes down. The first part of that is it's actually kind of difficult to be shocked by a lot of these roster changes because... Um, a lot of the times behind the scenes, because I have built relationships with a lot of the players and the coaches and some of the organizations, um, I'm privy to this information pretty early on. I've actually known a lot of these roster changes for a very long time. And to provide some insight to you guys is there's kind of this weird balance that I have to take where I have to provide the information to you guys as a speculation or as a, hey, this could be something or there's a lot of conversations where it'll be like someone brings up, it's like, hey, there's a rumor of this roster going here. And then rather than me saying whether I think the roster is going to happen or not, I more so talk about the reasoning as why it could be a good change or it could be a bad change. I take more of the analytical approach of, okay, AXP is going to rat enterprises. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't know how he's fitting into the roster. I don't know how he's going to do this. And I take more of that approach rather than kind of committing to it. And it's it makes it a little bit difficult for me to more so be excited about some of the roster changes. I think the one I'm most excited for is seeing Justin and Squishy play together. I think that's pretty cool. I think Turbo found a really good home in Envy. Uh, but when it comes to being excited or being able to predict these more accurately, being extremely candid with you guys, I usually know all the roster changes before they're going to happen, before they even make public through Shift and everyone else. 
Um, but sometimes things do change and that's kind of the exciting part. I mean, I knew one of Mike was supposed to go to Rad Enterprises for a very long time. Also know the organization that's supposed to be picking him up for numerous months at this point. But there's certain times where these things change, where other teams come and make a better offer, or United really has an opportunity. Someone that was nowhere near on the drawing board, no one that was supposed to even be considered because they were solidified with memory, end up coming in and kind of throwing a, uh, a fork in the road, and all of these other options are coming out. Same thing with, like, Pittsburgh Knights, where, you know, originally it looked like that it was going to be Rettles that was kind of the first pick. But because they start toying with other people, Rettles has got to look out for his best interest and creates this domino effect, so... Um, initially there was a lot of times where I do know about the rosters, but at the end of the day, things can change at the drop of a hat. I think Pittsburgh Knights in their current situation is a prime example. So, um, some of it is just kind of a, uh, inside source and having a little bit of the information. The other half of it is more so just, uh, being a fan of the game. That is going to wrap it for this video. You guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always drop those down in the comments below. I'll do my best to follow up as well as answer any that I can pretty hectic with casting as well as covering and making videos throughout the weekend. So again, appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in and watch and support them when I do make them. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. And I greatly appreciate it, you guys making it this far, as well as make sure you hit subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on the best Rocket League news coverage that is on all of YouTube. That is going to do it for us today. Hope to see you guys in chat for the ESPN Invitational, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.